Hey, what's going on guys? Bot Mentality here. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how I've been trading the VIX in the past seven days and how I've been able to profit off of the volatility we've seen and especially the downside we've seen on the ES. Um, and I'm, I'm developing a strategy here on the VIX um, and I have a couple good ideas. And I've really been putting those to the test recently and they have been paying off and I could plan to continue doing so, but I wanted to share this video to kind of document the process. And if we do see the significant volatility event that I'm looking for, um, that I can capitalize on, you'll see my thoughts before the trade, um, you'll see my thoughts during the trade, and of course you'll see the result after the trade, and I'll be able to talk about that. Um, before you watch this video, if you have not seen the video I made on the VIX just two weeks ago, I recommend you go check that out where I detailed where I made uh, 500 bucks on, on that trade on the VIX. That was on the VIX, right? Not the VXX. Um, but essentially what I did was I sold uh, call verticals here on this move, which is a bearish position, which is long the ES. The bias is either stability or upside on the ES, but I was short on the actual VIX and the reason why I wanted to sell premium is because you have the theta work on your side. And as you can see on the VIX, when you zoom out, um, this thing, it always sells off its parabolics, right? So it's a really high probability trade over 35. That's the too long didn't reach version, right? So there we go. So jumping into my thoughts here uh, for this week, I wanted to trade the VXX because you can sell premium on it. Um, the puts pay very well. The reason why the puts pay very well is because, as you can see, this thing always downtrends. So the puts are normally going to be a lot, they're going to pay a lot better than the calls. Um, and so I was looking to sell premium. Why sell premium on something that always down turns the downside as far as selling puts? Well, I wanted to do that because I was expecting volatility to increase on the ES as we consistently tried to get all time highs but kept failing. It felt really toppy. Um, I was I wasn't seeing beta moving as strongly as it should have. And I was looking, for, I saw on the weekly chart here on the VXX, we were getting pretty close to all time lows back from 2020 uh, here at 1315. So I think the probability of seeing a high volatility event was increasing as long as we kept this, you know, perma bull mindset. I mean, you look on, you zoom out here on the ES and look at this, it's pretty much consistent upside, except for this single pullback here, which was the last uh, parabolic here on the VIX, um, the VXX that I played. Um, and yeah, but now we're pulling in. So I'm going to jump into my trades from this week. Pretty much you see the all-time highs. We were selling off and just consolidating over 3,900. And I'll zoom in now so you can see the uh, the 18th. I want to show the 18th as that was the day I opened my position. Here we go. So let me jump over here. I'm going to talk about my trading over the past seven days. Sorry, I'm just getting my charts perfect here for you. So here's what I did. So on the... Uh, Thursday the uh, 18th, I sold 20 of the VXX 1550 puts at 50 cents each uh, just for next day expiration. So if these expired out of the money, I would have just collected the premium. If they don't, I keep the premium, but I get assigned on the actual shares. So what happened here is I was assigned. So on the, on the SPY, what you saw was we had a downside day here on the 18th on the ES, downside day, popped back up there into the close. And so that was on this day right here. We had a downside day on the VXX, but on that pop upwards here into the close on the SPY, it caused me to get a sign and got that flush. And so I ended up getting a sign on those uh, VXX 1550s, but I get to keep that $300 premium. So what I go ahead and do was if I'm assigned on the VXX, what I'm looking for is to go ahead and sell covered calls on it uh, to lower my cost basis. But if we do get assigned, I want to sell covered calls on half my position and then sell stock on the other side. So I can take advantage of the volatility and trading that up, down, up, down, up, down motion we've been seeing um, while collecting that premium to kind of pay me along the way. Um, for the, if that makes sense. I may need to re-explain that a little bit better in another video. But um, for the VIX, so I collected that initial $300. Now I have 2,000 shares at $1,550. Um, yep, here we go. I held these over the weekend into this week. So on Monday, what I ended up doing was I sold 1,000 shares at $1,560. So I was assigned here on the 18th, okay, or actually on the 19th, right? And the next day, Monday, boom, we gapped up, started selling off slowly. I sold 1,000 shares. I was assigned 2,000 at 1550. I sold 1,000 at 1560. So I only made 100 bucks on half the position. But the reason why I wanted to do that is so if we got a pullback into this $15 level, which tended to be support in the past, I want to go ahead and add those shares back, right? Hang on to 1,000, sell those covered calls, add those 1,000 back. So jump over here. I sold 1,000 of those shares at 1560 for 100 bucks, right? That same day, I sold 10 
1550 covered calls. Um, these were out of the money. I sold the stock was at about 1536. So if you look over here, um, 1530, let me go to the past five days. Let's see here. Yeah, fifth. So I'll zoom in on just this specific day so you can see. So the market uh, popped up here, started to sell off, and right here at 1536, I sold those covered calls. Um, I had already sold those shares earlier, so I didn't have the other thousand, but I sold the covered calls here. And these were out of the money. I sold them for the 1550. Now notice how if I would have held those shares, boom, got that huge explosive move into the close, which would have paid really well. But I already took those off for that hundred dollars and didn't add them back here because I wanted to see that move into 15. So I could maybe sell at the money puts or just load up on those shares. So then after I sold these uh, covered calls, I sold these for 47 cents. Um, because I sold 10 contracts, I collected $470 in premium, right? Um, now I'll scroll down a little bit more. And so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, okay? The VIX just continued moving. So I sold those on Monday. And just to zoom in here to this week, I sold them here. We saw the market move up, pull back some, pull back, um, pull back, back into here. We hit a low of 1444 before the next day getting that significant volatility, uh, volatility event I was looking for. Uh, we got a strong move to the upside here on the VIX. And what I ended up doing was I was hoping the VIX was going to break over 30 um, during a time frame where I could really get, get some get some contracts on. As you can see, I'm going to zoom in here. On this move, we hit 31 for a split second before dumping into the close. I wanted to see something a little bit more significant. You guys know I'm looking for that this, you know, at least throw over 33, at least get over 33 towards 35. Then I can start getting some size on shorting this thing. Especially because the ES just pulled back to 38, you know, 3800 area and held. I was expecting to see more downside, so I held off. I'm not looking to sell on this move. I'm waiting to see a stronger volatility event. However, that means the VXX is still in play. I'm still going to play this thing. I'm still going to shred it. So what I ended up doing was, um, remember, I still have a thousand shares. Uh, I sold a covered calls on. My average is 1550, and I sold the covered calls for 1550. So the stocks would be sold for break even but that I would collect $470 on those covered calls. And then today, which is Friday, um, I sold the 15 puts for 21 cents, just 10 contracts of those, so collected $210. Um, and so I did that today. We saw um, the significant to the upside on the VIX is 17.29. We sold off, sold off, sold off. So I pretty much already know I'm gonna get assigned on my prior contracts. But on this move to the downside here, right about here, 1573, on this candle, I was able to pretty much bottom tick the day almost. I went ahead and sold those uh, 15 puts because if we did get down here and I got assigned, I was fine with that because I'm expecting more volatility to the downside on the ES. But if I didn't get assigned, I just collect that premium, right? And I sold it for half a day left. So they had killed these things quick. I mean, within you know an hour, they were worthless, right? On those puts. So I get to, got to keep the whole premium. So I sold. Uh, those 21 cents which expired out of the money and i sold those for 210 dollars um, of course these got assigned uh today so i no longer have these so as of right now i'm currently flat on the vix however the total return over that seven day period was 1080 dollars um, just trading up and down up and down up and down now i'm doing this while i'm waiting for the big picture move on the vix which is what i'm going to jump into right now um, but I have no VIX positions heading into Monday. So just to recap, here's my game plan on the on the VIX. So uh, if, you, if you zoom out on the SPY, we have some room, guys. We have some significant room to the downside. You see we had this huge downside move initially right here, huge downside move into 3820. But we soaked it. The bulls did a great job buying this move down here into 3800. We moved right back up to the upside, okay? This is what trapped a lot of longs, including me. I was I was getting long into this move and had to stop out for a loss down there. What happened here was we had a huge soak and a move back towards all time highs, and immediately it got sold off. That's a very bearish. Um, uh, that really shook the market. It's a bearish sign because um, we have confirmed rejections of this 3900 multiple times of all time highs, multiple hot times. And we have plenty of room to the downside before we have to make another leg up. Uh, beta stocks, like you know, like the tech stocks, like Amazon, Apple, etc., they were all they weren't receiving a lot of call flow during this period, but also they were bearishly diverging, like they weren't getting anywhere. Like even when the ES ripped all the way almost back up to all-time highs, beta didn't really move. And I called that out in the chat room as that being a potential red flag before we got this huge rollover, um, which we got into um, into yesterday. In this morning 
So I big picture, I'm expecting that the ES can maybe revisit this 3700 area. That's all I'm looking for guys, to be honest with you. If we could see that next week, that would be huge for my ID on the VIX. If not, then we'll just play it by ear. I'll still be playing the VXX pretty much the same as I am right now, just scalping premium however I can. But that's not really the main play I'm looking for. The main play I'm looking for is on the VIX. I talked about this in the prior VIX video. Again, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But I'm gonna just recap that. Essentially, um, anytime the VIX gets over 35, right? It, it rarely stays over it for, you know, 12 days okay in a row so the thought process is when we see a significant volatility event to the upside go ahead and sell premium above that to collect that premium because every single parabolic the VIX has it gets sold off within 12 days right if it keeps moving up go ahead and continue selling premium up and you can ex extend your time frame out um, as you increase your risk so that you can essentially almost and I say almost almost guarantee that you're gonna profit from this move. You just gotta make sure you give yourself enough time and sell the right strike and expirations. So I've been talking to my room a lot about this. This is a trade I'm kind of waiting for. Kind of wishing I would have sold some on this prior day here, but I really wanted to wait for that big downside move that you know significant blow off on the ES uh, panic feel. It really hasn't felt like panic yet. It's just been day-to-day -day bleed on beta stocks just selling off. Amazon's a great example. This doesn't look like panic to me yet, right? Down, small bounce, selling, significant selling, but not panic, right? Um, I wanna see some more. I wanna see some more. So I'm looking to remain patient um, to see if, if we get one more significant leg down on the ES and I'll get that VIX move. But I'll, I'll detail and I'll let you guys know as soon as I take that VIX trade. Um, I just wanted to share how this week I was able to bring in um, that that amount of premium on the VIX, which really helped um, just pad the wallet this month and um, absorb those, you know, some losses I end up taking on the ES because, geez, man, that thing rolled over in here. And believe me, I, I was stacking up some size in a 3900. So if we got that moved to all time highs, I was going to be sitting very pretty. Um, so that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, if you want to join the chat room, have information that in the description box below. You can comment. I'll reply to your comment. If you shoot me an email, I'll reply to you immediately. And again, guys, remember to stay focused, develop that bot mentality, which is a trading mentality where you learn to eliminate your emotions so you can trade like a machine, guys. I'm out of here. Deuces.